Hello! From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month we're talking about women of science fiction. These women inspire us to imagine impossible worlds, alien creatures, and fantastical inventions, revealing our deepest fears and hopes for the future. Today we're talking about a pioneering Black author who wrote across genres, plays, mystery, horror, romance, fantasy, and science fiction. She used fiction to build worlds and present the truth while entertaining the reader. Meet Pauline Hopkins. Pauline was born in 1859 in Portland, Maine. When she was just an infant, her family moved to Boston. She would go on to live in Massachusetts for most of her life. Pauline's artistic career started when she was just a teenager. In 1875, she performed as a successful soprano. She also toured with her family's singing group. By 1877, she'd shifted to theater, first as a performer, then as a playwright. In 1879, her musical drama titled Peculiar Sam, or The Underground Railroad, took off. It also went by a few other names over the years. The play was a groundbreaking story of slavery in America written by a Black woman. But what Pauline became most known for was her fiction writing. In May of 1900, a group of four Black men published the very first issue of the literary journal known as the Colored American Magazine. Within its pages was Pauline's very first creative literary work. She was the only woman to be published in that first issue. And later, she became the literary editor, and then the editor-in-chief. The magazine became a home for Pauline's writing, which explored political, racial, social, and feminist themes in a variety of genres including what would later be known as science fiction. In 1902, Pauline published the first serialized chapters of her novel called Of One Blood. The story takes off when a Boston medical student sees a beautiful woman perform as part of a choir. This woman is light-skinned, white-passing like he is. He proposes to her, but before they could live out their wedded bliss, he needs money. So he takes a job on an expedition to Ethiopia, where he finds himself proclaimed king of a wealthy, advanced utopian city hidden beneath a pyramid. The book has been called the first science fiction novel by a woman of color, and the African utopian society that Pauline describes is something of a proto-Wakanda, the fictional high-tech African nation in Marvel's Black Panther. In her work, Pauline blended real histories with utopian potential, because understanding the past, really knowing it, was a way to fight back against racial prejudice in her day and she mixed all of that with a mystical, scientific adventure that broke down the social constructs of race. Pauline was living through an era often called the Nader. It was a particularly violent time for race relations in America. There were lynchings, scientific racism was codified, and Jim Crow laws enforced segregation across the country. A growing group of intellectuals was speaking out against this racial violence and discrimination, and Pauline was an important member. Beyond writing, she also hosted prominent luminaries like Mary Church Terrell, Ida B. Wells, and someone who would lead to her career's downfall, Booker T. Washington. When it came to helping the Black population in America, Pauline and Washington had differing political views. Washington had just given his landmark speech, the Atlanta Address of 1895, and while many praised him for it, W.E.B. Du Bois later criticized him, calling his work accommodationist as in accommodating and cooperating with the white people who oppressed them. Pauline agreed with Du Bois. She believed the black people in America should directly challenge the roots of oppression, and she wasn't afraid to do it in her writing. So Washington bought the magazine that Pauline edited, the place where she published many of her serialized stories and other influential writing. He did it through a front man, and then made swift work of taking the publication apart. In the end, he moved production from Boston to New York. Pauline tried to hold on to her job, but after a few months, she too was pushed out. The magazine shifted to espouse a more moderate political stance until it ceased printing in 1909. Du Bois later wrote that the magazine became, quote, so conciliatory, innocuous, and uninteresting that it died a peaceful death almost unnoticed by the public. After she returned to Massachusetts, Pauline tried working at a few other literary magazines, including one she founded herself. In the end, she supported herself as a stenographer and likely worked for MIT. Pauline Hopkins died in 1930 from injuries she sustained in a house fire. 
She was 71 years old. Despite an era of obscurity, since her death, academics and readers alike have devoured and analyzed her work. Pauline's pioneering novel, Of One Blood, was republished in 2022. All month, we're talking about women of science fiction. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. As always, we'll be taking a break for the weekend. Talk to you on Monday. Monday.